Restoration of a classic Ford is a journey of discovery. Let Auto Crafters help you with yours. We offer quality parts for Falcon, Fairlane, F-Series, Galaxy, Maverick, and Pinto. Contact us today. All right, we're talking about strippers today. Not, not probably the kind of stripper most of you guys are talk, thinking about because I know how a lot of you guys think and quite frankly it is a little scary. But we're going to be talking about stripping paint with aircraft paint remover. I used to know this as aircraft paint stripper. It's no longer called a stripper, it's actually just called a remover. So that's what we're bugging around here with today. We're going to be doing aircraft paint remover along with a pressure washer to hopefully help us clean up some of these areas. Now in an engine bay when you're doing this kind of stuff it's a little more difficult because you have a lot of nooks, crannies and crevices and divots and all kind of things that go along with this engine bay. And this engine bay is quite frankly kind of gnarly because it has seen at least two coats of paint in here. The original semi-gloss black that Ford used and then someone subsequently came along with another coat of paint on top of that. So what I want to do is I want to take this down to the base metals. Today all I'm going to show you is the tips and tricks doing this panel but over time Logan, Logan is going to go in and actually strip the shock towers down all the way around the inside of the back part of this engine bay. We are not going to be messing with the radiator core support or the battery tray apron because those are already in e-coat and I am not going to screw with that because it ain't broke. I ain't going to fix it. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go ahead and grab up some stuff and start showing you some tips and tricks. So amid roosters crowing and all that stuff this morning, I'm going to start taking things off. Now we've pretty much stripped out this engine bay down to its barest bones. We do have the new uh, steering box that we got from the guys at Auto Crafters as well as their drag link, idler arm, and inner, or inner and outer tie rod ends. All that stuff is brand new. When I get to this back section of the engine bay, I am going to do something with that by going in and putting some aluminum foil on all those components to keep them from getting nasty from the chemical stripper. Anything like this that's in the engine bay, you'll want to get rid of because you're not going to want to try to um, take this and strip it and then have clips like this still in play. I'm going to take these out and then we can start working on other things. Now. One of the things that I'll do with a chemical stripping is, is I will go in and I will use a 40 grit paper to rough up the surface before I apply the chemical stripper because I find that the stripper actually works much quicker because it has the, the cuts in the surface from the sandpaper to be able to work into the paint and get down underneath it and really pull it up and make it gooey and messy and yummy. Not really yummy, but you know what I mean. Now it looks like somebody did apply a primer coat here because there's a layer of paint and then immediately underneath there there's a gray primer coat. Can you do this sort of thing mechanically aka with a DA sander and 40 grit paper? Yes you can and it's going to take you a good bit of time to do it. I'd rather let the chemicals work for me rather than having to work this hard. The disadvantage of the chemicals is they're chemicals and they're going to be a problem as far as just making an absolute mess, which is why we put down the polyethylene earlier. All right, the mechanical portion is done. I'm going to take and uh, blow this off with an air gun and then come back in here and throw down some chemical stripper or aircraft paint remover. All right, now you notice that when I did this and was using the air gun, it was starting to pull paint down in here. This area probably could see a little bit of an advantage from just doing a pressure wash with a high, uh, a very tight tip on it, because right in through here, um, the paint's loose enough that I'm actually pulling it up with an air gun. If I can pull it up with an air gun that's not got a ton of pressure on it, it'd probably come up with a pressure washer. We'll talk about that in a little bit. Now I'm gonna go get my brushes and stuff and start doing some gooping. All right, I'm used to the methylene chloride smell. This stuff doesn't stink like that, which kind of makes me worry a little bit. I'm not going to put a ton in here. I'll set it to the side in just a second. 
Uh, ah, there's the smell. That's better. Now I'm a little more comfortable. Acid brushes that we use on these, just stuff that we can throw away. All right, now we're gonna take the stripper and we're gonna go from the bottom up. All right, here we go with some arming. I wanna try to keep myself away from the uh, radiator core support. I should probably be wearing gloves doing this, but so far I haven't gotten enough up on the shaft of the brush for it to be a problem, at least theoretically. But this stuff is pretty caustic still, so you're gonna wanna be real mindful of what you're doing with it. Like I go in through that hole there, it's dripping down on the other side of the car on the um, inner fender. This is just normal practice for this stuff. You want to do this on a fairly warm day as well. This is not a cold weather job. So today we're supposed to be, oddly enough, we're supposed to be in the mid-70s today. I'm not going right up to the edge because I want to, don't want to impact the radiator core support with the stripper. Going back down here, agitating a little bit. Probably should be wearing a respirator. Stuff is pretty strong. Always, always do this kind of stuff outside, folks. This is the one time I will tell you this is definitely an outside job because this stuff is bad news to your lungs. Just being over the top of it kind of makes me feel like I should probably go put a respirator on. All right, now what I'm gonna do with it is I'm gonna take this thing and I'm gonna roll it out into the sun and let that heat cook this stuff just a little bit more because it's not warm enough here in the shade for the heat to do its trick that you want it to do. All right, I'm gonna throw a little bit more on. Let that stew in the sun for a little bit. I may have to get another acid brush, but I'm gonna let it bake for about 30 minutes and then come back out here, see where it's at, and then start seeing if it'll scrape off or not. All right, so first coat, ineffective. <laughs> I'm gonna go back in and hit it again. Go a little thicker this time. We did what was recommended by going in and abrading the surface with sandpaper but uh, did not get the desired results. So I'm gonna go in and work a smaller area. The, uh, the container recommends no more than a three by three area. So we're gonna go in here and work smaller. Leave that set aside. And I am going to grab a soon to be worthless brush because once I do this with it, it's, it's not gonna be worth much. It is taking some of the paint off. This Ranchero was originally a white truck. Now a little bit of background history on the way Ford painted their vehicles. They would paint everything body color and then come back in with their semi-gloss black for the engine bay. Australia, they didn't do that at all. They just left the engine bay the body color. Sometimes think that might've been the smarter move. You can also use a uh, paint scraper as well to get this stuff off. Most of these aircraft paint removers can be neutralized with either mineral spirits or water. Yeah. 
and you just keep working on it. Now, I will say that probably the more fun version of this would be to take it to somebody and have a media blast to your car. But you're talking about a good bit of money. This will probably end up costing you a couple of hundred bucks because of the price of the paint stripper now. Um, but in some respects, it's a little easier on the pocketbook than what it would probably cost you to have it media blasted. That's going to vary by area. But the paint stripper, to me, can be just a little bit cheaper. It's just a lot more work. Get it! If you want to speed up the paint stripper, you'll want to go. You'll want to go in and actually put plastic over it to speed up the process a little bit because the plastic will actually hold the chemicals in there and help it chew away at the paint a little quicker. That's what your brushes end up looking like. What you're looking for is the paint to bubble up. If it bubbles up, you know that the chemicals are doing their job. And once again, because of all the things we're having to do because of the EPA and things like that, this doesn't work as fast as it used to. It does work as well, it just doesn't go as quickly. No better way to put it. Now, I just got hit in the eye with the slag off of this. And you want to talk about a nice chemical burn, that's the way to get it. That's why I wear eye protection when I'm doing these kind of jobs. I'm going to go into some of these areas and use the sandpaper on it a little more. I like 40 grit for this, it just moves it quicker. A little more stripper. We're going to leave that sit for a minute and see if it'll cook it and uh, come back and mess with it. All right, now I'm going to go and show you what I'm doing here because it's a little easier for me to just talk about it at this point. These areas, I go back in and give them another swipe where I've already peeled the surface back a little bit to get down to the other paint that's uh, kind of fighting back still. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to the next section I'm working, throw down some more stripper. And I do not go all the way over to the edge. And the reason for that is I do not want to get the aircraft stripper underneath any of those seams if I can help it. I will not work to a seam. I'll work to the edge of it, like on this where we have an overlap. It's a little easier to clean that up, but I'm not going to go right to the edge. It's easy to go in and to mechanically remove the paint with sandpaper rather than going in and actually using the, the chemical stripper to do it. It'll work a little bit better if you do it just to the edge and then mechanically go in with like an 80 or, a, or a 220 grit sandpaper up against those edges. This is a laborious process, folks. This is not going to be 15 minute four bolt. You're going to be at this a pretty good while messing with it. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to go in, see if I can get this to come out with that. Not working well. I'm going to agitate it a little bit. See if that does it. Don't wear nice clothes. In fact, if I were doing this on an outside surface, say on a fender, on the outside of the fender, I would probably buy one of the Tyvek suits that you can get over at the home improvement centers. Put the Tyvek suit on so that when I'm done, I can just shell the suit and be done with it. Because I'm inside of a fender here, I don't have to worry as much about the slag from this stuff coming off and slapping me in the shoes or anything. Although that is still possibly a problem. You might have a temptation too to go in and clean your brush. Not a good idea. 
the water or anything that you will use to neutral or to get the brush clean will neutralize your material and cut your productivity on the metal. Some stubborn stuff right there. Let's see if we can unstubborn it. Let's go with a nuclear option. Right now what I'm using is a stainless scouring pad that you can get for kitchen use from Walmart or any of these other uh, grocery stores. Get about six of them, get about six of them if you can. Uh, and these things are really good for doing this kind of final cleanup on this. You can also use these to knock back your surface rust after you wash it down. Best thing to do is to be wash it down with mineral spirits, but I'm gonna grab my pressure washer and pressure wash in here a little bit too. Just make sure that I'm neutralizing everything, even down here inside these crevices, in case some of this stuff got in there. Oh, and you don't wanna store it outside after you're done with all this. You don't wanna use this too much in the initial stages because it'll gum up pretty darn quick. It can be cleaned out after you're done with everything though. There, that's uh, pretty close to done. We are gonna go in and uh, pressure wash this area in here, clean it up a little bit. But that's what you want to get right there. And it takes a while. I mean, that quarter probably took me an hour to get that done. If you're trying to do a whole car like this, it's gonna be very, very tedious. So, on to pressure washing. <laughs> All right, now what I'm doing now is I'm going through and I'm hitting it with a little bit of pre-cleaner just so I can get rid of some of the residue that's on here. I've got places where it didn't quite pick up the last bit of the uh, solvent or stripper. All right, wire wheeling. This is where you pick up those areas that were too tough to take out the other way. And if you don't rid yourself of the gremlins that are up underneath, the panels here, like on the bolt holes and stuff, they will damage the paint once you repaint the car. All right, so going back over with a little bit of pre-cleaner, I'll probably go back in and hit it one more time. Um, most of these dimples that you see in here are factory dimples. That's probably for the washer motor and then the washer would actually go here. This was such a base Ranchero that it didn't even get a washer motor. It was just, you know, you just pulled over and wiped your window off, I guess. Um, and basically that's it. These areas over here, I'm going to go in and hit with 400 or 220, something that's got not a lot of tooth to it because I don't want to start grinding this metal up any more than I have to. These marks that I'm seeing down here probably aren't going to be that big of an issue. Uh, and probably none of this will. We'll go in and put a little bit of a primer on here, uh, possibly a red iron oxide primer, and then go in and semi-gloss black the entire engine bay. But I don't want to paint this until we are ready to paint the whole thing. All right, there's going to be a lot of guys that are going to come in here and they're going to say, hey man, with all the trouble you've gone to on this, you probably should have just gone out and media blasted the car or had somebody else media blast the car or sandblasted the car. A lot of folks don't have that option. Chemical stripping is something anybody can do. If they put down the polyethylene and they clean it all up after they're done, nobody's gonna be the wiser that you've done it. This is a 
fairly straightforward process. It's been used a long, long time and it works. So there you go. I've shown you how to do this. All right, so you know where I'm headed now. Please go out and check out the Patreon account. If we've done anything at all to help you with your car, and we've done a series of videos, and we saved you hundreds of dollars, maybe thousands of dollars, you might want to think about Patreon. It's a great way to show your thanks on a monthly basis to what we do around here. The money also goes to pay Andrew's salary and give money to the kids who come in here on Saturdays, so you might want to check that out. You also get, at the $10 a month level, monthly meetings with me on Zoom, and we talk about everything from, you know, what somebody had for dinner that night to what's going on with their cars and we are very much proactive when it comes to you guys that have maybe have issues that are on patreon helping you out even outside of the zoom meetings if you want to give me a call and say hey man i got a problem i'll do my best to help you out please understand if i don't return your phone call or don't take your phone call it's because something else is going on at that moment all right you know where i'm going next is all super thanks folks that's right super thanks we already had a guy 25 buckets. I don't even know what we did for him. He didn't say, he just said thanks. So there you go. You can do just one gift like that. 25 bucks is not standard. Most people give us a dollar. I'm waiting for the guy to give us two cents. It's coming. I know it is. And probably because I said this, one of my smart Alex is probably going to gift us two cents. And I will make sure to say something about it on the show and mention you. Do me a favor, folks. Be kind to each other. Love on each other. Treat each other nice. You guys have a great week, and we'll see you on down the road. So now, Logan gets to experience the fun of doing the rest of this engine bay. <laughs> I can imagine I'll, I'll probably end up doing some of it, because he'll be like, oh, school, I've got to go to work. I don't have time. Power tour is coming. And we are going. If he wants to go and ride in his own vehicle, this one's got to get done. But he's got to do it. Now I'm going to roll this thing back in the building, go drink a nice cold beer, and relax. Because that's what I'm best at. <laughs>